<laughs> hey, everybody. All right. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Uh, so we are coming to you live from uh, Fellowship Church in White Plains, Maryland. Marvin Harris is the pastor here, and we have quite a few folks here this evening as well. So glad to see all of you with us, and uh, we just rejoice in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord is good, and He desires us to assemble together. Amen? And so uh, we're gathered together in His name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for this time when we can gather together. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that we live in a country where we can still do this freely. And uh, Father, we ask you to help us to make the most of it, Lord. Help the make the, help us make the most of every opportunity we have, because the days are evil, as your word says. So, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everybody, especially to the household of faith. And this is part of our worship to you, God. So we, I pray that you'd help us to do those things, Father, uh, after tonight's service. And uh, we just delight in praising your name tonight, Father. Thank you, Lord. The greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. No, he's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy, perfect peace, and the pains finally will cease. Sing it out, celebrate, Jesus is alive. Yes, he is. He's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same Forever I am changed And oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way that you have saved me, and oh, what a glorious day, what a glorious name, Jesus, sing, oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day, 
You wash my sins away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. Oh, yes. Forever I am changed. Endless joy, perfect peace. Earthly pains finally will cease. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. He's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, Lord. Forever I am changed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. What a glorious salvation we have. Amen. Amen. What a glorious salvation we have. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Now, precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my share and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, and I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, 
unending love, amazing grace. The earth will soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who calls me below will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Yes, you are forever mine. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. What kind of a God gives himself? That's one way we know you're real, Lord, actually, because you give yourself. You're not an idol that we can't receive from. And not just dropping down gifts from heaven, but you send yourself. You sent your only son. And you are our inheritance, Father. Thank you for setting us free, Lord. Let's sing that one more time. My chains are gone. My chains are gone. And I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Amen. Father, we thank you for that amazing grace tonight. And that grace, that grace came with the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's available for us for free, and it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. And it doesn't leave us as orphans. It also comes in the form of the promised Holy Spirit who walks with us every day. Amen. And lives inside of us. Father, we just thank you. Your grace is so complete, not only saving us on that, first day we come to you, but carrying us all the way home, Father. We just thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, our brother Mark is going to, Mark Paulus is going to come up and we're going to have a, a time of prayer. And uh, I think some testimonies, you usually have some testimony too. <laughs> all right, and uh, we have some more people that came in, so welcome. Welcome to Fellowship Church. Glad to see you. Steve, you got me turned on. Yeah, here we go. Good. That was your hand. That wasn't a speaker. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> praise the Lord. <clears throat> okay, we do have a, a time of, uh, of praise, prayer, testimony. Uh, I always like to give a testimony of what God has done in my life in the past week. I was not here last week. I went down to Gloucester, Virginia to see my daughter, April, who was her third day in the hospital with a, a lung inflammation. I'm not even going to give a quote to the diagnosis, but, you know, because I'm leaving. She was healed 2,000 years ago by the stripes on Jesus Christ back. Anyway, my testimony, so I, I called her the previous day on Tuesday. I was on a job. Her daughter, my granddaughter, Kayla, text me, tell me, that mom was in the hospital. <clears throat> so I told her, uh, well, we prayed on the, on the phone for healing. And the following morning, in the 8 o'clock hour, I was ready to drive on down there. And she called me, telling me that she might be released that day. And I said, well, I am on my way down to visit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I walked into the hospital down there in Gloucester, Virginia, about a two and a half hour ride. And as I walked in, 
to her room in the 11 o'clock hour, it might have been 11.20, the doctor was there and he was looking at the screen there in her room and he was in the process of, of, uh, of uh, releasing her. Of course, he had to write prescriptions and ask questions and wait on the nurse and it was maybe two hours later before we actually left. But uh, it, it was perfect timing that I walked in while the doctor was there in the, for the, in the process of releasing her and answered prayer. <clears throat> and uh, well, I was going to mention my daughter Mary who has answered prayer as well. I won't go into the time of that, but she is blessed and greatly. Uh, well, God sees to her knees daily as he does all of ours. But uh, we have uh, pastor's daughter Cheryl Farr and her husband Angelo. I wondered if you might, you brought a friend. Okay. Yeah, actually, Mel was a, actually a big part of my life when I was going through a lot of stuff. She was a, a very good friend and a, kind of a mentor for me, and I'm very pleased that they're here and they want to be here. So it's kind of and I was going to ask you, if you got about three minutes, if you have a testimony for us. Well, okay, sure. You want to use the mic? <laughs> uh, I think I can. You, you can go three minutes. Put him on the spot. Everybody on the spot. Three minutes, I'll go on. That's okay. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this. Well, hey, good evening, everybody. Um, I guess if you know me, I know Joe and Mark and, of course, Marvin and Don. Everybody knows me, but I am uh, Cheryl's husband, and um, she is the daughter of Pastor Marvin, who runs this wonderful church. Um, you asked for a testimony, so let me just say, I guess the, the bottom line is I, I'd like to speak just for a second on friendship. You know, um, in my life, I've learned I'm 49 years old. I'll be 50 um, October 9th, Lord willing. And, uh, you know, it's so rare to just have a real friend in this life, um, a real friend, you know. There's so many people you call acquaintances, a lot of people that, um, you know, they act like friends. They, you think they'll be there, but when the, when the stuff really hits the fan and, and you're down and out, you know, you really do find out. You know, you've heard that. People know, but it's true. People really show their, their true colors. And uh, for me in my life, um, I was probably at the lowest point in my life. I was in Dallas, Texas. Um, I had just come through being incarcerated for a period of a couple of years. I had gotten out. I, I had a Lexus at that point, and I was doing well. And then all of a sudden, everything just, you know, tanked. Um, I, I, I was dating at the time. I lost that person I was dating with. I totaled my car. Uh, I got bit by a brown recluse spider, which made my knee swell up and uh, put pressure on my knee. I wasn't able to walk for about two and a half weeks. It was the most pain I've ever been in. It was crazy. It, it pushed on a nerve on my knee that shot pain straight up into your groin area, stomach area. It was just, it was horrible. And, um, and Mel was the guy who was there for me. I, I met Mel on a bowling alley resurfacing crew. Now, that's kind of a rare commodity these days, but, you know, bowling alleys used to be made out of wood. And, uh, and you have to go resurface them every now and then, every couple of years. And bottom line is that's how we met. We, we ended up rooming together and got to know each other over the years. And he offered me a place to stay. And I don't think he really had any idea how down and out I was. He may have, you know, maybe by just checking me out at that time. But, but I really was at a, at a low point. And I remember even being at his house. And I'll just admit this, because I'm in church, why not? It was the first time in my life I ever truly considered suicide. Um, that, that's how low I really was. I had a bottle of pills, uh, I had a bottle of alcohol, and I thought, wow, maybe, maybe this is the night, you know, to do this. And, um, but because of a good friend and a place to stay and, um, a phone call that came through right on time from my mother as well, uh, that stopped that. And, and, you know, uh, from there, uh, I went on and, and I got back on my feet. The brown recluse uh, bite went away. The pus and everything finally busted and, you know, it relieved that pressure. I was able to walk. I ended up coming to the East Coast and uh, meeting Cheryl. And that was, you know, my gosh, 15 years ago? Okay. So, and, uh, and life has been, of course, up and down. Life's a roller coaster. But it needless to say, it got really good from that point on. I, I owned a business. Uh, we, we got a house, took care of children. 
Um, but, but in the end, it all came down to, uh, at the lowest point in my life, if I didn't have a good friend, a real friend, not some fake friend that acts like they love you or they care about you, and then when something really happens, they just walk away or they don't care, they turn their back on you. But somebody who actually says, you know what, I don't want anything from you. I, I don't want money. I, I don't want anything strange from you, you know. I don't know. You know, in this world, statistics show that a lot of us are molested in life. I was molested as a child. I'm just going to tell you right now, you know, that nothing strange, nothing funny, uh, no money, no nothing. Just I just genuinely want to help you from the bottom of my heart. And I'll never, ever forget Mel for that. And I'm just so thankful he's here. So, you know, but, uh, praise God for a good, true friend. Amen. Angela. Thank you, Angela. Question. Yeah. What kind of spider bit you, do you know? It was a brown recluse in Texas, yeah. And it bit me on the inside of my knee and slowly Thanks for sharing that with us, Angelo. And glad to meet you, Mel. <laughs> you came all the way from Texas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, well, we don't have a whole lot of time. I'm going to have to jump into the prayer list. And uh, God does answer prayer. And I have a, <clears throat> a faith testimony I wanted to give off of my, um, that I took a, a screenshot of, if I can fit, squeeze that in. Uh, Pastor, we don't have any prayer lists from uh, the Jude House this week? Uh, no. Okay. Well, we do include them, uh, the continued ministry that we have with the Jude House. Those who are currently residents there, those who have graduated, it's a, alcohol, it's a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. A pastor ministers too, and uh, we have been ministering to them for several years now. <clears throat> those who have graduated, and not, we also include in prayer those who will in the future be there. Addictions are a horrible thing that they do ruin lives. But God, who is able, sets people free, particularly of addiction. So we're going to go through this prayer list, and I'm going to read the names. Uh, Michelle Woodell, Richard Reynolds, Cheryl and Angelo, Rose and John Younger, Joseph Kelly and family, Michael Turkey, Chloe Saul and her baby Melick, Donna Horton, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Pastor's grandkids uh, Ella Mason and Evan Mason, Jim Farmer, Christina Crown, Betty Stepp, Jimmy Ryan, Ronnie Stillwell, Bill Laracy and daughter Dawn, uh, Ray and Betty Remo's grandson, Tate <coughs> Remo. Denise Edelin. Pastor tells me with Joanne Williams is diagnosed with three malignant brain tumors. And God is going to have to do something if she's going to remain on this earth much longer. So we do pray his healing touch and dissolve those tumors out of her brain and that uh, she not leave this earth not a moment before the days that he planned for her. Mike Winslow, Jane Headley, who has COVID or has had, Roy Gibson, Renee Miller's grandson, Troy Waddell, Sandy Kavanoff, Danny and Carolyn McKinney, Braby Davis, Kimberly Harris, Jim Heath, Paul Fickner, Trey Thomas, Zoe Strong, and a two-and-a-half-year-old child with cancer that has returned. Jesse Hughes, Stan, Joe, and Dixie Kuchewski. Garnett Anderson, Mike and Debbie Boer, Ed Horn, Anita Baldo, Stephen Roberts, Mike Wen, Julie Burgess, uh, Andy and Pat Melberg and their adult daughter Sarah, Robert Pickle and Aunt Joyce. Dale Hayes, Paul Mattingly, Pastor's wife Donna, Robbie Anderson, Steve and Brenda Sears, Charles and the Newman family, Jesse Booth, Sherry Greenhow, John Brady, David Matty, Debbie Roberts, Susan Lehman, Kimberly Martin, Ricky Rogers, Catherine Sarson, 
Rachel, pastor's, pastor's granddaughter, Rachel Enstrom, Sisson, her married name Sisson now, and their child. How old is that baby now? The baby is uh, nine months old. Nine months old, that's little Richard, right? Little Richard. Little Richard, okay. Uh, Butch Lissinger? Lissinger. Lysinger, thank you. Leah and baby Cooper. Dave Beam, who pastor says has melanin cancer behind his eye and they're going to have surgery. We pray that God would lead and guide the surgeon's hands and uh, be in control of that surgical room ahead of, the, ahead of Dave when he go, before he goes in and when he comes out and a quick recovery and a full recovery and healing from that cancer. Mike Anderson, Chuck Jones, Karen Burke, and we're going into prayer and I like to declare God's word uh, in prayer and make this proclamation of faith. If, if I can find my screenshot of this, yes, here we go. I declare that I am healed and whole in Jesus' name. I will fight the good fight of faith by laying hold of the eternal life we have in Christ and holding fast to a good faith confession. I will run my race, finish my course, and keep the faith. With a long life, he will satisfy me. My mind is sharp. My spirit is in tune with the Holy Spirit. I can hear his voice clearly. My feet are directed by him. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, and he is making me alive in my physical body. Every cell, organ, tissue, bone, muscle, and tendon is energized with the life of God, supercharged, he renews my strength daily like an eagle. I will soar. The older I get, the younger I feel. He's my daddy, and I'm his child. He takes good care of me. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for your continued uh, caring for us, continued healings, financial provisions, housing, the whole line. And uh, I always like to add, Father, that those who are suffering in bondage to addictions, Lord. You are the way maker. You can set them free, even as you did me so many years ago. I thank you and praise you for that and your answer to prayer. In Jesus' name, Pastor. Hey, Mark. All right. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Luke 18. And we'll hang around uh, the book of Acts for a while. <clears throat> Bill Heath, I want you to come up. This is one of our models, and I wanted him to show off this shirt because uh, I love it. All right, you're ready for a walking billboard? <laughs> my name's Bill. This is my board. <laughs> one way to cry, one way to God, Jesus Christ. Then the other arm is the Old Testament to fear God because he is holy and he is just. And then the back, when you do that, you love Jesus and hate sin. Amen. So kind of short gospel. All right. Thank you, Brother Bill. All right. I want to say, first of all, thank you to the church for Sunday. We had an amazing day. We had... Uh, our first here uh, potluck, and we had a feast. Uh, we had uh, probably three times the amount of food we needed to serve, and it was a big crowd, but it was just such a blessing. So I want to say thank you to all those that cooked and that uh, helped uh, be a part of that, and also Sue Dodge from the Gaither uh, uh, Ministry, <clears throat> she uh, she tore the house down. And what an amazing testimony in the ladies' class uh, about her having COVID and uh, going in the hospital. And then when she got out, her husband went in. And when he got out, his brother went in. I think I'm saying that right. Am I right, Don? Huh? Son went in. He is also a preacher. And... Uh, uh, it was uh, 
an amazing story, but she had us fired up, I'm telling you. So let's go to the book of Acts. Lord Jesus, we love you, and I just thank you for your holy word. I thank you for tonight. It's good to see Cheryl and Angelo, and it's good to see their friends uh, here, Mel and uh, Debbie. And the book of Acts, chapter 2, I'm sorry, chapter 8, starting with verse 26. And uh, let's read. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, and to the way that goeth from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And uh, the, by the way, the title of this message is Divine Design. And uh, he goes on to say, He arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had uh, the charge of all her treasure um, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot, uh, and he read Elijah, Elijah, I'm sorry, Isaiah, the prophet. And the spirit said unto the Philip, Philip, go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet of Isaiah and said, understand us what thou readest. And I love this. And he said, how, and he said, how can I except some man uh, would guide me? And Philip desired that he, and he desired Philip to come up and to sit with him. In verse 32, and the place of the scripture where he read was this. Uh, he was led as a, a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shear, he opened not his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment, was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh this prophet? Speaketh the prophet uh, uh, this, of himself or of some other man? <clears throat> then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. I like that. Jesus is all through the word of God, through the Old Testament. Amen. And uh, we see here, uh, the man says to him, um, uh, in verse 36, we might as well read this too. And as they went on their way, they came on a certain water. Remember, they were in the desert. And now, wouldn't it be and it just like the Lord to have a body of water there? And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart. That's why we don't baptize babies here. Uh, they are not able to believe with all their heart. And uh, also, we baptize by immersion. And he goes on to say, <clears throat> in verse 38, <clears throat> excuse me, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they both went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them there. And in verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. I'm telling you, something happened to this eunuch. Amen? He got born again. He got saved. His life was changed. It was transformed. I remember when Don and I got saved, our lives were changed, and we've never been the same. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I like reading through God's word and seeing his timing and his appointments in the lives of his people. Uh, uh, oh, do I see it in the lives of his people. Point number one today, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm having a little trouble. I've been to the uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist this week who told me for the last year I've been on the wrong medicine. But what a blessing to go into a man that knew what he was doing. And uh, one doctor put me on steroids for my throat. But this doctor went down into my throat uh, 
on this short ladder. I'm just kidding you. And, uh, and a flashlight. And he went down in there and he took a look around and uh, he said, you don't have cancer. And, uh, and he told me why I was having the problem I've been having for months. And uh, so he uh, told me to stop taking the steroids right away. And, um, and he said, come back in a month. And this guy is the same man that showed me that I was taking too much salt a couple years ago and too much caffeine. <clears throat> when I stopped that, I'm no longer dizzy. Uh, and so praise God. Uh, it does, uh, it's a good thing to go to different doctors if you feel led. That's all I would tell you that. Um, Christian, our life is by divine design, no doubt about it. Philippians 1 6 tells us, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. What a promise. He started a good work in us. Uh, how you deal with delay, I'll tell you this, and obstacles will determine if you're going to go through this life defeated or victorious. Many well-known people in history have faced delays and obstacles. Listen to this. Booker T. Washington was born in slavery. Thomas Edison was deaf. Abraham Lincoln was born of illiterate parents. Julius Caesar was epileptic, had epileptic problems. Louis Pasteur, who invented vaccines, they say was so nearsighted he had difficulty finding his way into his laboratory. Helen Keller, I like this, graduated with honors from a famous college. She only had two handicaps. She couldn't hear and she couldn't see. <clears throat> graduated with honors. What a blessing. Amen. What an inspiration. Uh, maybe you're here today a product of a broken home. Maybe you're a product of an alcoholic family. Maybe there's a handicap in your life. Uh, do you have a circumstance that seems too big today? I will tell you, call on the Lord today and wait on him. We looked Sunday morning at waiting on the Lord and the last two Sundays. Uh, that reminds me back in the yesterday uh, days of gone, that have gone by, uh, many would sell miracle drug potions supposedly to cure whatever ailed you. I always have loved this story. A 16-year-old boy got on the internet a few years ago selling pills for arthritis for $6.95. He was 16, selling pills for $6.95 a bottle. He would order back pain pills for $2 a bottle. His 14-year-old sister would order in hundreds of these from the manufacturer and then put her 16-year-old brother's arthritis label on them. He became a millionaire in one year. <clears throat> I would suggest not trying it, <laughs> but he did. Uh, I said that to say this. God has some cure-all verses for our obstacles, for our circumstances. <clears throat> I talked to uh, Dave Beam, who some of you know I love with all my heart. And uh, I know he's going through the trial, so I texted him after I prayed with him, or prayed for him, I texted him Psalm 37, 1 through 8. Fret not thyself for evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass, and wither as a green herb. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. And, shalt, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You know, it is amazing to me. Um, we have these bird feeders in our yard. And, uh, and I get up in the morning. I, we have a little pond. I feed my fish. And then I put bird feed in the bird feeders. 
And it, you know, it tickles me because I haven't, I've never seen a dead bird in my yard. God's feeding those birds, amen? I'm feeding them, thinking I'm doing something, but God's fed them. I mean, they probably already had breakfast, right, waiting for lunch. And I'm in there thinking I'm doing something. Moving on. Then verse 4. Delight thyself. This is one of my favorites. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That's so true. Commit thy way unto the Lord also. Uh, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Uh, he shall uh, bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man that uh, bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any way to do evil. First he said in verse 1, don't fret. No work, don't fret. A- amen? Where is... Uh, I don't see him now. Um, we had our friend come in from the Jude House Sunday, and uh, he, uh, Owens, and he came forward, and he wanted to get baptized and, and make sure he was saved, and uh, it was his first day here, and the blessing is one man came up to him and offered him a job, so he's got a job. He's working now. One day in church, he's, got, he's going to get baptized, nailed down his salvation. Some other ladies and people came up and wanted to know if they could feed him. They want to bring food to him. One lady came up and wanted to give me a check for the guy. I actually told her, not yet. Um, you know what I'm saying? And the, another person um, uh, came in and, and gave him a bicycle so he could get around town with it. One day, don't fret. No work, don't fret. Trust God. No money uh, for a house payment, don't worry. Don't fret. Uh, Your loved one just walked out on you, don't worry. Don't fret. I always love that story. I've told in here recently about Joey Danoon, his mama who I met at his wedding. And I think I told this really recently, but... uh, when she was married, she had twins. Within a year, she had a second set of twins. Within another year, year and a half, she had her third set of twins. She had five kids, one died. She had five kids under the age, I believe, of five and under. She had five car seats in her car when her husband walked out on her when her husband walked out on her. And she said to me, she said, Marvin, I made up my mind. I was going to live in church. I was going to help any way I could to do anything I could. And she said, and I taught Sunday school. She said she did it all. I raised my kids in church. And she said, and then God gave her a wonderful man as her husband uh, several years later. And the blessing to me was when Joey Danoon, do you remember that name? <clears throat> Joey Danoon, he was at Forest Park with us. Anyway, he, uh, um, when he was getting married, he stopped and gave testimony of his mama and what a wonderful mom she was. And then he gave testimony of what a wonderful stepdad that he had and what a joy. And he wept, giving testimony about how close they all were. What a blessing. Listen, trust in the Lord, verse 3. Delight thyself in the Lord, verse 4. Commit thy way unto the Lord, verse 5. Rest in the Lord, verse 7. Wait patiently for him in the second part of verse 7. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. In other words, let's just give it all to him. Amen? Amen? Let's make him king in our lives. One day, we're going to be before him. One day, it's going to be over. I have had the privilege to do so many funerals lately, and you would think they would all be elderly people, but they haven't been. So many were young, 
uh, it's, it's, uh, we have no idea when the Lord's going to call us. Psalm 37, 23 and 24 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way, and though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord uh, upholdeth him with his hand. Point number two today, trust him. There are divine appointments. Again, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, We are made righteous or good by the Lord, by his precious shed blood. At Calvary, not by us. I remember my wife's brother passed away a few years ago in Dallas. And we went to Dallas, Texas. And I don't like to fly to begin with. You can tell by looking at me. But I couldn't believe it. Uh, I am sort of chunky. And, uh, and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And you know the blessing? There was one seat empty on the whole plane and they were closing the door I thought man this is a piece of cake Donna's here I'm here I'm also here in this chair and then a tall Texan comes in with a big cowboy hat on and a big pencil mustache six foot five I forget his weight but he sat down beside me, he had a one book in his hand. And uh, he told me his mama had just died. And all I could think about was, man, this is just like the Lord. We are trapped here together for almost three hours. And so I started giving him my testimony and telling him what God had done for me. And, and the tall Texan, by the way, he was financially he's pretty well off. They have a lot of those hydroplane speedboats there. And, uh, and he actually builds them and races them. And his wife is a doctor in Waco. Are you near Waco? Pretty close. Okay. All right. But So anyway, he asked Jesus to save him on the airplane. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Isaiah 4, 31, But the Lord saith, But thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by my name, thou art mine. So we have divine appointments. I have to tell this. This is a rerun from Sunday. Y'all don't mind, do you? Do you mind, John? Mrs. John? I have to tell this one more time. Uh, I did this funeral last Tuesday, and I took my old car. They wanted me to drive my old car. People like my old hot rod uh, because they say it's a happy car. It's a 49 Ford front, a 49 Ford rear, and a 94 T-Bird in the middle. I, I was confused when I was building it. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, she wanted the lady at, that, that I preached her mama's funeral about a year ago, she wanted me to drive the old car to her daddy's funeral Tuesday. So she said, Pastor, you don't have to come early. She said, viewing from 9 to 11, I want you to preach at 11. At 11 o'clock, I had to be there. So I thought, well, I'll just take my time. And usually I never do that. I always try to be there earlier. So I get into King George, Wawa. You ever been there, Angelo? I got into King George Wawa, and, uh, and uh, I got gas in my car, and I locked the keys in the car. And I'm running late because she told me not to come early. So I had like 30 minutes to get there. So I ran back, and, and I will tell you this. There's not a Wawa on the earth that has a coat hanger. And this was one of them that didn't have. So... Uh, I ran in there, and I looked up, and there's a guy in line. I preached his brother's funeral one week before. He said, Marvin, how can I help you? I said, I need screwdrivers. I need coat hangers. (laughs) And uh, he said, my house is five minutes away. I'll be right back. 
Now, I'm trusting God. I have to confess, I'm praying. I'm praying and trusting God. So he ran off to his house, and sure enough, five minutes later, he was back with his toolbox. And, you know, all the coat hangers nowadays are real flimsy. I don't know how they even hold clothes up. Well, I got one and, and, uh, from him, and, and being an old body and fender man, I can usually get into about any car. So I pried the, back, the window and the back of the door open enough to put the head of the screwdriver in there to get a little gap. Tinted windows, I couldn't see a thing. I put the other, and I'm thinking, I got to get in this car. I got to go. I thought, I'll bust the window out. I'm thinking this in my mind, options. And, uh, and, and that was really not a good option, but I was going to do it if it got a little closer to time. So... Uh, I put that thing in there, and then getting down to it, a lot of these cars, it's hard to get into them once you're in there, once you got a little slot. And the coat hanger was flimsy, so I tied a little noose in the coat hanger, and I slid it down in there, and I hooked the door handle. And Mel, I started pulling on it. And uh, it wasn't opening, <clears throat> but I learned an old trick at the body shop. If you take the palm of your hand, and while you're pulling up on the uh, coat hanger and smack the side of the door as hard as you can. I mean as hard as you can. Boom! And, uh, and that gives a jolt in the, that lock assembly. And I'm here to tell you, that door jumped open. <laughs> Amen. I got in that car. I was there two minutes before 11. That's a blessing. Amen. And I didn't break my window. One time I was in, uh, this may go over a couple minutes. One time I was in, uh, 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 in um, Upper Marlboro. I preached a funeral at nighttime. And, uh, and it was 30 degrees. I was in a thin summer suit. This actually is not really my, I don't wear a suit usually, but I tell people this is my camouflage outfit. It hides my muscles here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, uh, I learned another trick a long time ago. I couldn't get in my van. It was locked. It was like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. It was cold. It was windy, 30 degrees. Uh, somebody lent me a little flashlight. There was one or two cars in the parking lot. I was able to get it uh, pried open, but I didn't have a coat iron. Nobody had one. So this is the trick. I took my antenna off the car. This is the trick. Take the antenna off. They're ten dollars. You know what I mean at any uh, auto zone, and I put a little bend in it, and they're much stronger than a coat hanger. And I was able to get in there and break into that car. So I'm telling you all that to tell you we have divine appointments. Amen. God wanted me at that funeral at the right time, but <clears throat> I was I was shook. I got in my car, I put it in drive. I think I was, I wasn't going 100, but I was going fast. And uh, I called Debbie Gibson, because that's one of our ladies here. She's in charge of the food. I said, Debbie, I said, I'm on my way. I'm going to make it, I'm sure. Uh, my car, I had trouble breaking in. I said, but now I can't find my phone. I don't see it anywhere. I said, listen, I got to go. I'll call you back. And I set my phone down on the center console. And I'm looking on the floor, that floor over there, and then I look on the center console and I said, wait a minute, I was talking to Debbie on my phone. He takes care of us, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, he looks down and probably, he was probably looking down and saying, mm, that boy needs help. Listen to this, point number three, trust him. There are divine delays. There are delays in our life that we don't necessarily like, but God has a reason for them. Psalm 69.3 says, I am weary of all my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Diane Ball put it this way in her song. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you... Do just what you say in your time. We need not give up, beloved. Amen.
We need to trust him all the way. Jesus delayed his coming. Remember the story of going to Lazarus. And uh, purposely. And the Bible tells me that he wept. And he moaned when he came to his friend's graveside. And uh, Lazarus died. And Jesus waited while he was in the tomb four days. And you know... um, that uh, after three days, the body starts to decay. <clears throat> he left them. He was there four days. And remember, Mary said that uh, he said to open the, the tomb. And Mary said that um, uh, they said, roll the stone away. And Mary uh, and Jesus uh, oh, oh, lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. <clears throat> but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, saying, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, he cried. He didn't yell. In verse 44 of uh, uh, John 11, and, when, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You know, I think of tears of sorrows, tears of suffering, tears, so many tears that we shed in our lifetime. But thank God for Jesus coming, coming to help us. He came to seek and to save that which is lost, He said that he came to heal the brokenhearted, and he has done that for us. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, by the way, but that the world through him might be saved. Excuse me, Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's the weight that gets to us sometime, isn't it? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's move down here. Uh, We need to wait on God, trust him, uh, trust his timing and his delays sometimes, obey his commands. Waiting will yield, no doubt, will yield blessing like planting. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Also, impatience will rob you of blessings. Delay shows heaven's clock is different than ours. The world says, what a coincidence. We Christians go to bed at night and say, divine design. Tell your neighbor, divine design. Amen. Point number four, last point. Thank God for divine intervention. Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And God is able to make all... This is a great verse. I just threw this verse in at no extra charge. (laughs) 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye having always all sufficiency in all things may be able to abound in every great work. Peter, on the eve of his execution, was delivered by an angel. We know that story. The chains fell off. It was no doubt divine intervention. Daniel continued to pray when he was thrown into the lion's den and... uh, The lions must have gotten lockjaw is all I can think of. Or maybe they were hit by that guy that hit that boxer the other night. What was his name? Broke his jaw? No, he didn't break his jaw? Broke his what? Broke his leg? He broke McGregor's leg? Don't get in the ring with that guy. (laughs) Amen. But the Lord shut the mouths of the lions. 
divine design. Remember Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was told by, of God to sacrifice his son on Mount Moriah. And he had his knife drawn back to slay him, and God intervened. That's divine intervention, no doubt about it. We have all these stories in the word of God that will encourage us and to see how we can live victoriously. Amen? Amen. Uh, maybe you're here today and you'd say, I've never seen God's intervention. I'm here to tell you, you need to ask God for some God stories, and he will give them to you. Divine intervention. My wife, I asked her to marry me. She hated me for two years after that. I told her we'd be married in six months. She hated me for two years. And you know what? We got married the year probably you were born, 72, you're 49? 21. Yeah, close. You're 21? No, no, 71. <laughs> 71, okay. All right. Pray for this young man. But um, we've seen, if you've been saved, you need to tell your friends. Amen. If you've been saved, you need to be scripturally baptized. And you need to read his promises. You need to live for him. You know, Jesus was a servant, the Bible tells us. Paul was a servant. Peter, in chapter 1, he said that uh, um, of, in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, he said he was an apostle and a servant. But when you get to chapter, uh, the second Peter, 20 years later, he said, Peter, a servant. He was a servant. God's looking for some servants. And I will tell you this. Uh, I told the church this also a few weeks ago. Um, just because you're not doing something in the church, teaching a class or serving in some way, you can serve the Lord in church. Some of the greatest uh, years of my life, I think about people uh, reaching out to others. When we lost our little boy years ago, the people cared for us. They loved on us. They reached out to us. You know, it's amazing what a little handshake will do. What a pat on the back. I'm here to tell you that's serving God. People need it. Uh, uh, that one guy, a preacher, said he preached to the brokenhearted in every pew. And I thought, well, that's dumb. How could he say that? And then it dawned on me later as we, I went through this life that all of us are going through one trial or another. Uh, Satan does not love us. He's out to destroy us. And he wants to destroy you and me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for tonight. And Lord, I, I thank you that, uh, that you have given us divine designs for our life. And we thank you for all the blessings. And again, I want to just say thank you for all those that helped Sunday. I want to say thank you to Sue Dodge, who touched our hearts uh, with such wonderful singing. And uh, uh, again, we and also want to thank those on YouTube for watching and for uh, all their giving and everything else, we're just so thankful tonight. And we love you, Lord Jesus. I pray you'll give us a good night, a safe night home. I pray you'll give us a great day tomorrow. In your name we ask these things. Amen. 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 Has anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Amen. What a great verse. By the way, there are uh, some of our bulletins are on the back tables. Please take one. Please pray for our friends. Uh, and we have seen so many great answers to prayer. Be sure to take one on the way out. And now, uh, Joe, come on up and close in a word of prayer. <laughs> the Italian stallion is going to lead us. Come on up, Rocky. That's good. Go ahead and be seated. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the for tonight, Father. We thank you for Pastor Mark, Marvin and his family, Father. We pray for a blessing upon him, Father. Now, Father, we we pray that uh, what he has taught us tonight that we use it and uh, use it wisely in our lives, Father, and help us to become better people as we serve you, Jesus. And we pray this in your heavenly name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, don't forget. Tomorrow morning is uh, prayer breakfast. Bob Evans at 8 o'clock. Men only. Every once in a while, we men need a break. Just kidding. Shake hands with somebody. Make somebody feel at home. Hands on the